Go ahead, Irene. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I know many of you were on the previous meeting uh, the, for the permitting uh, meeting, and I want to welcome you back. And those of you who were not on, oh, you missed it entirely exciting meeting, but actually it was a very important meeting to get this, the issue of closure and how it was going to be handled, done and done correctly. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to start the meeting this morning or this afternoon, it is, I guess. And uh, you've received from Janine a copy of the, uh, first I should say that we do have it a quorum in attendance so that uh, we will be able to conduct our minutes. The first things to do is the review of the agenda for today that Janine sent out last week, or do I have any changes to make it to the agenda? Just the uh, change from Michael uh, uh, Michael Bay to- uh, Dr. Watson, yes, yes, I got that. All right, if there are no other changes, I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor, say aye. Aye. Raise your aye. hand, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we also got a copy of the minutes uh, this past week. And if there are no changes, or if you want to make the changes later with Janine, uh, I would ask for a motion to uh, approve the minutes from the, our last meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Um, I have one announcement to make and a change, and I'll keep saying this a couple of times during the course of the meeting. Our December meeting, which was to be on December 13th, has been changed to December 6th. That is to avoid some complications of timing and everything else that some of the members of the commission had. So please remember, I've given you plenty of time to change it in your calendars. So it's December 6th, same time, three o'clock. And uh, we all meet uh, virtually as far as I know, unless some strange thing happens that I'm not planning on having happen. So December 6th, so we will please meet at that time. Our first uh, item of business is uh, to hear from Dr. Watson about uh, anything that he wants to give us from the Aqua headquarters. I know he's on the phone someplace. I, I am, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect, that's great. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to meet with everyone this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Abay uh, unfortunately extends his uh, greetings and his regrets that he's not able to attend himself. Uh, he's uh, in about 20 minutes uh, briefing Ms. Rosenblum uh, on some uh, aspects of the program. Um, I know that, that several of you met with her last month um, at uh, the, the end of operation celebration uh, at, at PCAP. Um, so uh, very exciting news uh, there. So um, let me start off uh, by noting that as always uh, safety continues to remain the number one priority for this project. Um, we are uh, very appreciative of the uh, productive collaboration that we have with the CAC and with CDPHE uh, as we continue to work the permitting uh, of the closure phase for the, the program and are uh, hopeful uh, that that uh, uh, productive relationship continues. Um, we also continue to maintain uh, continuous and open engagement um, and free and clear communication uh, with the congressional delegation, uh, the Colorado state, local government, and community leaders and other stakeholders uh, across both the federal government and uh, um, uh, the state of Colorado. So uh, I do want to emphasize uh, very strongly the importance of uh, this meeting today. Um, you, you know, I, you will hear in the upcoming slides about some of the risks that we are facing at PCAP. 
Uh, we're monitoring them closely um, and, and uh, recognize that the likelihood of these risks is significantly increasing. So we've already begun to see an increase in workforce attrition um, and expect this to continue to grow uh, in the absence of productive work uh, since we are not permitted at this time. Further, the risk that funding will be decremented in the absence of that productive work is very real and is greatly increasing uh, uh, the, the risk that the duration of closure will extend well beyond what anyone expects, uh, impacting uh, the transfer to the LRA, uh, which I think is something that, that none of us want uh, after our recent success at uh, uh, the end of the destruction operations. So uh, unfortunately, if these risks materialize, um, the issues that they cause uh, can be expected to affect our ability uh, to meet proper disposition of the facilities and the equipment and to, to ultimately achieve uh, the end state uh, of transferring uh, PCAP uh, to the LRA um, for, as, as everything has been planned. You know, I think it's important that everyone has a clear understanding of the impacts um, of uh, those risks materializing in a variety of areas. And I hope that we can continue to uh, uh, be productive in the permitting conversation and move that along uh, expediently. Um, I, I appreciate you allowing me a few minutes to convey the seriousness of this situation and ask for your consideration and assistance in moving as quickly as possible toward the closure phase so that these risks don't become realities that negatively impact the families, livelihoods, the environment, project safety, and future use of the depot. Thank you. Are there any Questions for Dr. Watson? If not, uh, we'll move on. Thank you very much, Dr. Watson. We'll move on to Colonel yeah. McCutcheon. Hello, everyone. How you doing? Can you hear me well over there? Yes. Okay, yeah. So I'm a little bit different today. I'm not in uniform. My son had a little medical issue, so I had to stay back home with him today, but he's doing good. So I'm, I'm talking to you now from the house, but I do have on my PCD shirt, even though I'm not in uniform. So I'm in <laughs> pseudo proper uniform. But I wanted to say uh, five things I want to cover. The first thing is our sure determination was approved by headquarters DA last Friday on the 22nd of September. So what that does is allows us to step back on certain requirements that we had in place for so many years while we were doing our chemical surety storage mission and also with pushing those rounds over to PCAP for DMIL. Of significance, a lot of the security restrict or requirements that we had are going to step back. That's good for us because we've been really stretched thin when it came to providing security guards to cover the entire depot plus that chemical surety mission. Now with that pulled back, we no longer have to force folks on overtime, which is also very dangerous because they work very long hours. So we think this is a good thing. It's a part of the closure plan. We, um, we, we understand that this is how things are going to have to go. For us, it's a big culture change because we've looked at the CLA for so long with so much intensity. And now we're saying, well, we got to kind of pull back that culture and start stepping things back. So that's one of the biggest things that we're doing right now with that uh, approval for sure determination. Um, next for permit renewal update. So this week we did receive our permit renewal application extension. So thank you to the state for that. And now we'll look forward to receiving. Yeah, thanks, Julie. And uh, we'll look forward to receiving anything, any comments y'all have for our PCD um, closure plan so we could uh, move forward and, and start that once we're all on the same sheet of music. You know, just like Dr. Watson, once we get that approval, we can really move forward and, uh, and start this last phase of operations, which is the closure piece. But I, I really appreciate the fact that CDPHE has worked so closely and, and we get a chance to communicate and listen to each other and work through things to get a good path forward as a team. So thank you.
Um, the third thing I want to mention is last month we did our we had our suicide prevention and awareness month where we got a chance to really dig deep into one of the number one um, destroyers of morale. And that is suicide in our formations and across our, our military. So we got a chance to, to share a lot of different tools that folks can use so they don't ever think about or contemplate that final decision of suicide. And we talked about that a lot this past month. We culminated the month with a, a walk run, one and a half miler on the installation. So that allowed us to really bring folks together, talk to each other, and I think most importantly, build the community of trust so that if anyone was ever contemplating suicide, then they understand they got folks around them to help them and they don't have to go that route. Um, the fourth thing is that I'm gonna share a couple of job postings that we have. We have an engineering equipment operator that's open right now until October 2nd. And then we also have a firefighter paramedic that closes on December 22nd. So if anybody out there have some folks that may qualify, please send them our way. And lastly, if everybody's been looking at the news, you've been seeing that we're staring a government shutdown right now in the face. Uh, we've been planning for that. Um, you know, the, the outcome right now, we'll see how it goes, but it's not looking too great. Um, we're already pulling out our furlough letters. We're identifying all the folks that we have to have on the installation to keep things moving when it comes to just base operations support the PCAP, um, especially our firefighters and our security folks. So we have them on standby. We'll have to tone it down to bare minimums, but we'll make sure that we have the right folks in the right place to support any activities on the, on the depot. More to follow. I think we will all find at the same time when it comes out on the news outlets. So pending any additional questions, that is all I have for PCD, over. Are there questions of Colonel McCutcheon? I don't see any. I know the question I was going to ask you answered in your last comments on the furlough. So I, I thank you. Uh, if not, then we will move on to our permitting work group. And I think I'll leave it to Julie uh, to decide what she wants to talk about. Sure. Thanks, Irene. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we discuss what kind of what the <laughs> what's going on, what um, we've all been busy with, and everyone knows it's closure. Um, so yeah, we've been meeting with PCAP the past, I don't know, several few weeks. Um, seems like a couple months now at this point to kind of discuss preliminary B-71 and OD responses. Um, and so yeah, I, I think the meetings went well, um, but I would say we're cautiously optimistic because we don't have the responses yet so we don't know the level of detail we don't know what the responsiveness will be um the adequacy of the responses so yeah i'm just kind of you know uh putting that putting that uh caveat with it um we yeah we just um yeah we we have made our requirements abundantly clear and i i think that's our position and so um yeah we're, we'll just wait and see what we get with the responses and i kind of um, outlined the public involvement going forward um related to b71 so if you have any questions on that let me know um yeah, so I mean, I just wanted to say we are sympathetic to the project's concerns regarding attrition and, you know, retention of workforce, but um, those do not overrule the need to follow the closure regulations and to go about closure in a methodic um, <clears throat> and, yeah, you know, regulatory, regulatorily compliant manner. So um, that's kind of our position. Um, we think that the facility has all the information they need to adequately respond to our comments. Um, and we're confident that if we do get um, <clears throat> an adequate level of detail and responsiveness in those B71 and ODs, then we're confident the process can move forward smoothly. But again, we're not going to know until we get them. So yeah, that's kind of, I don't know if Colleen wants to add anything there, but that's kind of where we're at. We're just living closure lately. Yeah, just to follow up on what Julie said, we are definitely aware of the concerns with the workforce down there. We are putting all the resources that we can into 
working on the closure, reviewing the plans, getting things turned around as quickly as we can. But we can only approve a document that that really you know, ticks all the boxes as far as the, the, the requirements and the regulations and ensures that the closure is gonna be done in a, in a safe manner, not just to protect the workers, but also ensure that the facility is protective for future use. So, you know, we have a lot of criteria that we're required to meet. And um, once we get a, a plan to the point where it meets those criteria, we will approve it and, and, and assist the facility in moving forward quickly. But our hands are somewhat tied if we um, have documents that don't meet the criteria that is that is approvable. So uh, we will work with the facility as much as we can to, to move it quickly. I think we have been throughout. We've been meeting on a regular basis. We've been having open dialogue. So as Julie said, I think we've given them all the tools to provide a document that to us that's approvable. And so we'll, we'll see what we get when it's submitted to us. Yeah, and I guess just one thing to add to that. Um... <laughs> The closure plan does not need to be perfect by any means. We don't expect that every single word is going to meet the intent of the regulations. Um, I mean, we we do it all the time, or we did it all the time with operating permit modifications. We can approve as modified. Um, so yeah, we're not looking for perfection, but we are looking for all of the information that we need to be in compliance with the regulations. So just wanted to add that to the mix. Are there any questions of Julie or Colleen? I do not see any, but I have a question that was posed to me late last night, and I didn't want to call you at 10 o'clock at night since I knew you were already in bed. But fortunately, this other person called me. So <laughs> uh, the question was, what can the workforce do while we're waiting for the closure permit to be approved for particularly PMR 71. And, and I, I told them it was basically that which is not covered by the RECRA permit, but that's kind of a loose uh, definition from my point of view. So if, if you can have some a little specificity to it, that would be very helpful so I can respond properly to this individual. Yeah, I mean, I can attempt to answer that. Um, yeah, so they can, and again, I don't know the nature of, you know, what is currently going on at the facility, like what types of waste they have. I mean, they do still have hazardous waste. They have hydrolysate, I believe. Um, I think PCAP raised their hand. So they can, I'll let them take this and then I'll add to it. If, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so we can uh, continue decon of the facility. So that's across the SDC and the main plant. As Julie indicated, we still have uh, waste material throughout uh, the biotreatment area, uh, material coming off of, uh, you know, exhaust streams from the SDC, for example, or from the OTS from the main plant. So we continue to manage uh, uh, those type of activities to prepare to to commence the closure phase when when the state is is ready to authorize it, and and we continue to meet the current operating right. requirements right. and permit requirements. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I would say um, no disassembly um, of equipment, but yes, what gross decon of the outside of equipment, you know, walls, um, floors, all of that. That is within the bounds of their current permit. Um, yeah, and then also what they covered regarding hazardous waste management. Okay, thank you. Paul, yeah. Paul has well, a comment. Well, uh, I was gonna comment on your question. I was gonna just make a general comment. Uh, both Colleen and Julie alluded to it. And I think Kim talked about it in a previous meeting. Uh, you know, we really appreciate the guidance and uh, assistance, whatever you want to call it, leadership from Colleen and Julie uh, going through this process. Uh, it does seem like we've been meeting for months, even though it's probably uh, just been a few weeks. Uh, in email time, uh, days seem like weeks and weeks like months. Uh, but, you know, in previous meetings and uh, you know, I've iterated, we've always had the same goal in mind, you know, safety, uh, certainly and what's doing best for the community, the workforce, and everybody and doing it responsibly. 
Uh, you know, when we started, we kind of had different visions of the path, how to get there. Uh, but over the last several weeks, and again with Julie and Colleen's help and guidance, our paths have really merged. And I think we're getting uh, much closer. Uh, we even, uh, you know, call Julie uh, jokingly our coach. She's really coaching us. Uh, which is I very funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kim used that um, acronym in one of our first meetings. And I'm like, that's hilarious because I do not watch football and I know very <laughs> little about it. So <laughs> I'm yeah. like, sure, I'm the coach. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just don't watch the Denver Broncos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, not their coach. Yeah, yeah not them. <laughs> but, you know, just, you know, we kind of use that because, uh, you know, again, as we align visions and paths and how we're going to do that, you know, uh, we're still that that team of uh, PCAP, CDPHG, the community. Uh, we got to stay together and making sure we're doing uh, the right things for the right reasons based on the information we have. Uh, so again, uh, you know, at times it may sound contentious, uh, may sound other things, but it's, you know, we've really made a lot of progress uh, in the last uh, couple months or so. It, it has been a while uh, working through this. Uh, you know, it'll take some time going forward uh, to make sure, again, we're or where we need to be. But I just wanted to make the comment of uh, really appreciate uh, where we're at and how we've got here. Uh, it's the right thing to do. Any other, <clears throat> excuse me, any other comments or questions for Julie or Colleen? If not, we will move on to uh, the bio treatment system, and it's your all yours, John. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. I'm, I had to go on my phone. Comcast is down in my neighborhood today, so I have no no uh, Wi-Fi. Is, is, is Patrick? Uh, I'm giving on the report. Go ahead, Patrick. How many dead bugs do you have? <laughs> oh, quite a few, I'm sure. They're they're dwindling, but the, the ones that are left are still doing their job. So, you know, we can talk about, as we always do, the hydrolysate that is stored status, the biotreatment, and then the water recovery system. So uh, we do have a fair amount of fluid in oh. the Armon slide three. So we do have a fair amount of fluid in the 30-day tanks or the hydrolysate storage tanks, as we would call them. So they're about overall about 60% full. So we've processed all the neat hydrolysate from, from the campaign. But so this is like all the residues. So the it's the TDG and everything that comes out of the sludge that is in the bottom of these tanks, and then TDG. It, and, and other, you know, hydrolysate products from when we're doing all this flushing of equipment. So this amount of water you see in here is reflective of the amount of flushing that we've been doing in the plant. So we have a fair bit of water in there and you can see that it's diluted significantly from when we were uh, in operations. The TDG in these tanks would be in your typical range would have been in the 20,000 to 30,000 part per million range. And you can see now we're down in the, you know, 1,000, somewhere between 100 and 1,000-ish. So we still have TDG that needs to be treated. Uh, you know, these levels are still much higher than the concentration of waste that would go into a regular sewage treatment plant. We're still, you know, somewhere in that three, four, five times more concentrated than a sewage plant, a normal sewage, sanitary sewage plant would treat. So we're still, you know, it's high strength in relation to everybody else. It's just 
you know, 20 times less than concentrated than we used to treat. Uh, so that's the status of the tanks again. Uh, so if we go on to slide four, we're only running module two because that's all we require. Uh, so we've flushed the module one and it's, it's kind of sitting there. Module three is drained. We just run from the module two. And then if you go on to slide five, you can see uh, we run actually at a quite a much higher flow rate than we had originally because it was so concentrated before. Now we can, you know, we would run in the kind of three, four gallon per minute range previously. So I'm on slide five. And uh, now we're up there pretty high at seven. Uh, because it's so much more dilute, we can run we can run quite a bit more in there. And you can see just recently we've been having some uh, plugging problems. So it's kind of tapered off a little bit there towards the right hand side of the graph. As, as is the, the case, the dithione tends to crystallize in the lines. And so uh, we get the arterial sclerosis and have to deal with that periodically. So that's what you see there on the right hand side of the graph. So we're, uh, you know, it's just within the last really few days that we're kind of, you know, we'll either flush it with citric acid, flush it with hot water, even at times have to rod out these lines to keep them open and functioning. So that's what you see on the right side of the graph. We're just kind of dealing with a little bit of that, but no problem. It's, we do it all the time. So on to slide six. Then you can see the concentration, uh, the blue line, you know, used to be in that uh, three, four, five, six thousand ppm range. And now you can see we've kind of trailed off and it's 800. And now due to our lack of ability to, to feed through the clog line, it's even dwindled down there into the, you know, 100 ppm and change most recently. But I think, you know, that'll rebound just slightly once we get the lines cleared and we can we can get more flow to the reactor. So we continue to process the efficiency continues to be essentially 100% all the time uh, as far as the thiodide glycol is concerned. And, and then we continue to bring the water back around to the B12 system and use it over again for more flushing. So if we move on to slide seven, then you know the B12 status, it, it does, you know, it operates at a much higher throughput rate than the rest of the plant. So we operate that on an intermittent basis. Um, and, uh, you know, right now we have a fairly low inventory just because we have been, have been processing. Uh, and so that's kind of it for how things are going now. Uh, Walton did ask me to discuss a little bit about uh, the future, like the end uh, of the biotreatment and, and the water recovery systems and kind of what the implications of that would be and how we're going to try and handle some of that. Because that, that is going to involve some shipping of, of waste. So in the... Hey, John, the, did you have something? You're, you're talking about the slides, right? Well, I'm, yeah, now I'm beyond the slides. Sludge. 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 Oh, no, I'm not necessarily talking about the sludge. So we are, uh, but we can talk about the sludge for a moment. So we are, you know, we, we do have this flush water, you know, and we're flushing the plant and cleaning it out. So it's a little more, uh, we, we may move that over into one or two of the 30 day tanks and get the other one real low. And set and self clean out the sludge in the bottom of some of those 30 day tanks. That's we may self perform those tasks rather than having Violi or somebody come do it as far as the as far as the moving of that sludge and uh, you know kind of concentrating it and getting it ready to ship as waste. So we might do some of some of that work, but. And there is some sludge accumulated in the bottom of those tanks that'll be cleaned out as part of the closure process. But I'm more talking about all of the, the entire water system as a whole. So we have, you know, we 
use the water in the process, it becomes hazardous waste, it goes into the, the BTA and then it comes out and then we test it to meet what is essentially equivalent to the drinking water standard. And then, then we reuse that water again over in the process. And, and the, this uh, recovered water or process water as we call it, you know, goes to the process water tank and then it's used in systems throughout the plant. The chilled process water system, the hot process water system, the boilers, it goes to the RO. We no longer be using that process water to wash out munitions because we don't have any munitions to wash out, but we still use it to operate all the utility systems in the plant. So, but eventually, you know, we'll come to shut the shut the plant down. And right now all that process water enjoys a hazardous waste exemption because it's being reused. It's not considered solid waste and therefore it cannot be a hazardous waste. And so all those systems are, are not part of the RICRA permit. You know, they're, they're not hazardous waste management units like the ROs or the boilers, for example. So in the future, as we wind down processing then, that process water tank can be supplied either from the B12 system or it can be supplied from the M10 system, which is the potable water system. So as we wind down operations, you know, we plan to switch the supply of this process water to tap water. Okay, so we'll switch it just to the well water and we'll use that in lieu of the recovered process water. And then, you know, that will, maintain the non-hazardous status of all that, all those systems, you know, and then, but once they are flushed through and then come around into the B14 tanks, then that would now be mixed with hazardous waste and become hazardous waste. And so uh, in the end, then we're going to lose the ability to recycle. And so we'll accumulate water in the B14 tanks. And so we need a consider that we are gonna do some trucking in to get rid of that water ultimately. Now we can, we, you know, the most environmentally responsible path that we can take to continue to, is to continue to utilize the system. So we have the capability to internally recirculate within that B12 and B14 system. So I can get what is the, all of that spent water that is K903 waste, I can actually, if we operate the plant in a certain way, then we can take all the salt that's in all that water and confine it all to one tank. So we can concentrate all the bad stuff into one of the B14 tanks. And then that would have to be shipped off to Deer Trail or, or similar and solidified. You know, it'd have to be taken to a TSDF. And so that would be our plan to get rid of that. And it, so our idea is to put all the bad stuff into the one tank, and then that will go to a put to hazardous waste landfill and probably be solidified due to the high salt content of it and the mobility of salt. Then the way you're probably going to have to deal with that is to solidify that waste. But then I can, all the rest of the water that's left in the other couple of B14 tanks, one or two of those is essentially going to be like distilled water. Right, it's going to have all the waste that we can remove from it removed. It's going to maybe meet the BRS SAP, so it kind of meets the drinking water the standard. And then, and we're likely to have more volume of that. So we're trying we're trying to come up with a way to dispose of that water that's more environmentally conscious than taking all of that to Deer Trail and solidifying it as well, because that 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 you know is bad from a number of aspects, a huge carbon footprint and so on and so forth. So we're, we've been exploring uh, options. And one thing uh, we can do is we've enjoyed this hazardous waste exemption. So that part, the process water side of the plant wasn't hazardous through operations. Now we might be able to then take that water that we've purified and, and send it to a sewage plant because there is a, hazardous waste exemption for that as well. So we could take it to a sewage plant and discharge it through an industrial wastewater pretreatment program. That would allow them to, that would remove the hazardous waste code. Oh, your cat. 
and comply with all the regulations we can get rid of we could get rid of that larger volume of water that way so we've include we've included a white paper or a memorandum discussing this strategy uh in our resubmission of the 71 then we've included that as an additional attachment it'll be attachment 21 and so then you know the state and and, and the site will then confer and see if, see if that uh, strategy is acceptable, but we just wanted to let you know that, you know, we are planning for the very end point of operations and how we can best utilize the BTA to uh, perform the maximum amount of waste minimization and uh, do the, you know, do it in the most environmentally conscious fashion possible. How many gallons are you talking about? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, because we're not done flushing. So, you know, when we get farther into the closure and we start cracking equipment apart and doing all that flushing, it's hard to say how much flushing that we're going to need to do at that point to get everything clean. You know, and, and, and it's hard to say how long our entire closure process is going to go on. But as long as we need chilled, as long as we need chilled process water and hot process water, you know, as long as we need heat and water and stuff like that for the utility systems, we can continue to operate that system because even though the, even though the TDG concentration may dwindle a lot, it's still, the, the water recovery system still removes all the salts out of the system and can make the water reusable again. So we continue to operate that as long as we can. So you know, and as we wind down, we'll try and, you know, not not add more water than we have to, you know, and kind of minimize our inventory and so forth. But we do get to, we do just kind of have a certain critical mass of water that has to be in the system to kind of bring the B12 system online and stabilize it. So we'll get to a point where we can no longer crystallize and make salt cake. You know, and then after that, then that's when we'll try and perform this uh, strategy of concentrating all the salt into one tank and making it very salty. And we'll have to truck that out as very salty water. But um, I mean, right now it's all the water we have in the system, right? Which is, uh, you know, it's close to a million gallons. You know, we're going to try and see if we can get that you know, down to something substantially lower than that. But, you know, we haven't, uh, you know, we haven't explored exactly, you know, what it'll take to operate the system kind of on the fringe and everything like that. But, but we'll work to minimize it as much as possible. Yeah. So how long do you think you'll be using the, the uh, three storage tanks before they're clear to be de demolished? Okay. So um, we expect to process out the 30 day tanks. Is that so long? No, you're good. You're yeah, good. Um, this year, by the end of the year. Um, and then at that point, um, we will be set up for flushing and sludge removal, as, as Pat mentioned. Um, and then the next piece would be to, to drain uh, the modules and then go to B14 and and as Pat said, get that through its final research, concentrate the salt into one tank. And at that point, it's just removal of the final fluid. So that'll happen um, in the winter, spring time frame of 2024. Hey, uh, any other questions for Patrick? Are there... I guess that's it, Patrick, thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on now to the presentation by PCAP and Kim and Todd and Walton. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, again, we'll we'll start off like we usually do with Todd giving uh, safety update and what's going on on the project. Kim will update what's going on in the facility, and then I'll close us out. Okay. All right, so if we can, let's start with the next slide. As we start with safety, always. Uh, uh, for August, we didn't have a, a great month. We had two first aids. One was actually a person removing their badge. They caught their fingernail in their badge holder, uh, so they got treated with the Band-Aid. The other one was actually going through a turnstile 
and the person hit their head on the turnstile going through uh, the rotations. And the other one was a recordable. Um, it was a, a conservative uh, aspect that we did, but we had a, a couple employees going into one of our trailers uh, right towards uh, uh, end of the day, uh, getting towards nighttime. And as an employee entered one of the trailers, a bat came down and landed on their back. So the bat was uh, knocked off by the other employee. Uh, the bat ended up being uh, captured and let go. Uh, but we took the employee over to medical. There was no scratch, no bites, uh, uh, anything with the bat, but they did land on them. So our medical team did go ahead and, and, uh, and, and give the employee uh, 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 shots and, and rabies shots. And that requires that to be a recordable. So um, and we are looking at ways in the future of, hey, can we, uh, if we do uh, capture the bat, uh, work with uh, wildlife uh, and uh, get, get the bat tested. Uh, but uh, we are changing some of our protocols for that. But it was, it was conservative. We want to make sure the employee was okay and nothing occurred from the bat landed on them. So if you go on to the next one, and some of this was covered by the Colonel, uh, but uh, uh, treaty, we did uh, do treaty termination. So OPCW verified no munitions remain on the site for the main plant. We did walkthroughs uh, for the SDCs also. Uh, we did close out for all the energetics, they actually went down to Aniston and made sure all those uh, were, were processed down there. They completed a 100% uh, uh, a review of all of our final reports uh, to verify everything was destroyed. They went ahead and, and uh, departed the, the depot on the 14th of August, and we have received OPCW uh, a, a, a letter uh, and note that states that uh, PCAP has uh, fulfilled their mission and successfully completed uh, the destruction of all the chemical munitions on the depot. Uh, for surety, as the commander stated, a lot of activities went through surety, as you can see through here. Uh, a lot of uh, sampling, uh, flushing uh, activities that were done, waste manager affidavit, state and no recoverable agent. We had to do it with our environmental, and uh, that uh, drop in the surety plan does not affect that on our, our permits. Uh, treaty compliance, also affidavit as they went through and as I stated before, uh, did all their verifications. We also did walk downs of all the STCs, main plant, all, all the magazines, uh, verified that uh, all the material was properly removed, uh, checked all of our, our monitoring data and contamination history reports. Uh, the Army uh, Materials Command came out uh, and reviewed our evidence package. Uh, walk through the site uh, for us and PCD. And then as the uh, uh, commander stated, uh, received a surety termination letter on the 22nd of September. So uh, we'll, we will be working to start to make some of those changes here in the, in the next few days. If you go to the next slide, uh, continue with that. So moving out, uh, one of those would be our medical department. So we'll transition from medical operations uh, for employees uh, perform entries. We'll now transition from Army uh, mustard uh, surveillance standards to OSHA standards and emergency response standards. Uh, we continue our hearing conservation, our drug uh, drug-free workplace, random screenings, drug testing, respirator clearances, all the bloodborne pathogens heat stress monitoring, and then any other surveillance programs for exposures will continue on the plant site. So we're just really moving out of the, the uh, surveillance requirements for mustard into OSHA requirements. You go to the next slide. So uh, again, most of our employees that were in our uh, chemical uh, personnel reliability program uh, they'll transition to OSHA and American uh, American with Dis Disabilities Act uh, compliance safety sensitive positions. Most of those positions are are, are plant personnel, uh, shift shift managers, uh, supervisors, medical staff, waste handlers, transporters, all the toxic entries personnel. Uh, so they're they're doing that transition. So our uh, surety program is doing that transition for the employees. I think uh, I just got another update. So we're down to about 130 
uh, personnel uh, left to go to perform that transition. Uh, but we expect to complete that over the next couple of weeks. Uh, those positions uh, uh, will, will still be uh, uh, able to uh, have all the medical facilities and our medical staff will be staffed here at PCAP. With that, I'll turn over to Kim and she'll give a little update on the STC review that we just recently completed. All right, so we've had quite a few visitors over the last month. Uh, you can see actually uh, Korea uh, delegation showed up to see all the great things that had happened here in the state of Colorado. But, but really the main focus was uh, from two entities, um, a group from Huntsville, Alabama, as well as a group from Aberdeen, Maryland. And that was to assess um, the SDCs that they understood um, future reuse requirements um, operating in their respective states. So we spent some time walking through um, the SDC complex, making sure they understood the facility um, utility requirements to operate the SDCs, uh, you know, the types of um, uh, technical detail, uh, parts information that they would need to operate. And then we also laid out our conceptual plan on what we plan to do to deconstruct um, the STC units and prepare them for shipment so that they would understand the state that they would receive those units in, um, again, uh, free of agent, um, free of hazards, and, and ready to ship. Um, so uh, we look forward to further discussions with those uh, two government entities um, um, to support the future re reuse of these units um, elsewhere in the United States. Next slide. So I think we've uh, beat this to death, but again, B71 uh, NOD response is our priority. Um, I'll go back to what Walt said earlier. We really appreciate um, all the collaboration from Julie and her team. Um, Colleen attended uh, a majority of those sessions as well. And we do appreciate um, her experience. She's uh, supported a lot of clean closure across the state of Colorado. Uh, she provided her perspective and lessons learned of best practices um, that we have implemented into our NOD response. And, you know, our goal is, is to hit the mark uh, and make sure we do have an appro approvable uh, permit modification. Um, and uh, we are aligned. Uh, we want to conduct a safe, compliant uh, closure for PCAP um, so that we can turn this over to the state with confidence um, so that they can turn it over to the public with confidence. Um, so we look forward to continued uh, discussions with Julie and her team and, and uh, you know, start the commencement of the true closure phase here at PCAP. Next slide. So we do continue to focus on our people. Um, our most precious resource. So what we've been doing um, since the last CAC is uh, uh, continuing to prep them for their future uh, assignments, uh, whether that's uh, locally or elsewhere. Uh, we've been focusing on resume writing and interview workshops. We've had 50 employees participate in doing an interview. Some of these folks have worked with us for, you know, over 10 years. It's been a long time since they conducted a face-to-face -face interview and and so that was helpful, helpful to them. And when we look at the locations where um, folks could potentially transfer within our respective companies, uh, we have brought in um, specific training to prepare them for those uh, job assignments. So for Amentum, um, we have uh, high hazard supervisor training. We've also got safety trained supervisor that focuses on the OSHA fundamentals. Um, those have been going on in force and uh, have been appreciated by the workforce. And then uh, we continue coordination of efforts uh, with Pueblo Plex, um, looking forward to potential uh, local employer um, opportunities. Uh, so this is my last CAC. Um, I do depart the project next week. I wanna tell you it's been an honor being a part of this project and working with all of these great people. I'm very proud of leading this project through chemical weapons destruction um, but I am going to return to my roots, which is nuclear high hazard cleanup. And so I am uh, looking forward to continuing to do great things for our country and make it a safer place. And with that, I'll turn it over to Walt. I think I, I got the next one. If you go to the next slide first. 
So uh, one of the things uh, uh, based off of, of the work fronts, uh, as we discuss, and I think uh, Dr. Watson uh, discussed that also, is looking, hey, uh, what activities we can. I know Irene asked that also, activities we can be doing with the workforce. Uh, you know, the permits, uh, we are working with the state, as, as Kim stated. We believe we'll be submitting a, a package that aligns with the NODs in our, our meetings that we've had over the past couple months. Uh, but uh, we have gotten out of surety. Uh, we've done those flushes. Uh, we continue to do what we can on, off of decontamination. But we are proceeding with a, a greater than 10% workforce reduction by January of 2024. And then, uh, as uh, Dr. Watson stated, there's additional workforce reductions uh, that are under evaluation that uh, can result in schedule impacts. Um, so uh, the, the hope is that we get a, a, a good... Uh, permit across the state's able, able to um, look at that and says that aligns with the discussions we've been having and we can get uh, authorization uh, to move with some of the closure activities. Uh, but uh, with that uh, uh, potential reductions uh, scenarios of, of more what ifs of a reduction of up to 300 employees, we estimate that the schedule impact to be about five to six months on our, our closure activities. 500 employees uh, that will move it out uh, uh, close to 16 months. And then a potential of uh, over uh, half the remaining, slightly more than half the remaining workforce. And, and that has a potential impact, uh, impact to increase the schedule close to 38 months uh, up to 39 months. So uh, definitely a, a major impacts uh, if we have to go execute uh, some of these uh, additional reduction in force uh, of our work staff. I do believe our, our, our folks here are, are, are uh, prepared to perform the closure activities. So we look forward to getting that, that permit uh, to the state in their review. In addition, uh, from uh, some of the, uh, the discussions going with the state and, and looking at our, our permit, uh, their uh, uh, potential recycling of some of the steel, there's about 3,000 tons. Uh, we assumed that we could uh, try to get that to the recycling aspect, but uh, that's not going to be able to be the case. They're going to carry their K codes and will be disposed of in, in a Class C landfill. So we'll, we are losing that opportunity to recycle uh, some of that steel there as it will maintain that uh, K code uh, for the closure activities. Any questions on this slide? Dad, I'll turn it over to Walt. Next slide, please. So here's our last holdover slide from Ops, uh, as Pat just articulated, and Kim. And you know, we're still running the PTA. Uh, currently, we're projecting hydrolysate processing uh, through the end of November, maybe into December, uh, and keeping uh, that part functional, but as uh, Pat uh, walked us through, you know, depending on how closure goes across the site and uh, how facility, individual facilities and hazardous waste management units close, at some point in time, uh, we'll have to take the BTA offline uh, and do something with it. It'll have to go through its closure and that type of stuff. And there will be uh, process fluids and sludges on site that we will have to uh, dispose of off site. So we didn't want to catch the CAC off guard uh, by tell, you know, waiting to tell them, you know, in the future we will have to ship some fluids and sludges off site. And we will. Uh, try to manage that uh, very closely to minimize that. Okay, next slide. So as most of you uh, participated in, uh, we had a tremendous end of ops event and celebration. Uh, I know some people on the project will be looking for the same type of celebration uh, for the end of closure and demolition. 
Uh, not sure I will last that long. Uh, Come on, Walt. But, uh, you know, we will have the same joint success uh, again uh, with the community, with CDPH and the site uh, going through closure and demolition. Uh, so we will all be uh, proud to stand up again at the end of that and, and have a, a community celebration and, and do that. Uh, operations really taught us all how to be partners and make sure we look after one another. And there's no reason that closure and demolition won't follow suit. Uh, we know how to do, do that and we will do that. And so with that, uh, we'll throw it out uh, for questions and those type of things. I see there's uh, maybe questions over here in the margin. We need no, 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 there, there, there's a lot of uh, well done to Kim, of Good course. Wishes. Yep. Good wishes and the Colonel. I'm thinking there's some guy that smiles too much in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, on behalf of the CAC, I'd like to thank you for all of the good work you've done for us and you've done with us, and we really appreciate your help, and we wish you all the best of the future. Thank you. Are there any other comments for Walton, Todd, or Kim? Seeing none, our next CAC meeting is October 25th. At three o'clock, it'll be virtual. We hopefully will have all kinds of good news about where the permit is at that particular time. And uh, as I said, if you, anytime you have any questions, do feel free to contact any one of the members of the CAC or Janine or Julie or Colleen, and they will help you through that in Walton, and they will help you through it. Don't forget to change your calendars for the December CAC meeting to December 6th. And if not, there's nothing further, I'll see all of you on October 25th, except for Kim. She'll be in some other place, no doubt having more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I will take it a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you very much.